Hello friends, we wanted to show you how we built our earth battery greenhouse in the mountains of southeast Oregon at 4,400 foot elevation. Our greenhouse is 40 feet long and 21 feet wide and approximately 10 feet high. It is covered with two layers of greenhouse film and there is over 550 feet of pipe in the ground under the greenhouse to circulate air through to help keep the temperature in the greenhouse above freezing. We researched and watched YouTube videos on the subject off and on for about two years before beginning our project. We've incorporated several features from other greenhouse projects that others have built. We'll continue to improve and modify the greenhouse as time and finances permit. Due to budget limitations, most of the materials we have used have been repurposed, so I can't give you an accurate cost estimate for our project. We didn't get the frame completed and the poly on it until October, so we were very late in getting the greenhouse established. We had a few plants that we moved into the greenhouse once the poly was on it, and it was just in time as the nights were getting colder. The Lord provided most of the materials. People gave us lumber, plywood, styrofoam insulation, etc. We were able to secure some used high tunnel galvanized steel hoops and two by threes to go along with them from a friend who owned a property where marijuana growers had erected greenhouses before she purchased the property. She wanted them removed and gave us the hoops. We did purchase some of the materials, including a 120 feet of six inch PVC pipe and some elbows and tees for manifolds from a plumbing supply. We also purchased 500 feet of 4-inch perforated corrugated drain pipe with some couplings from Home Depot. When assembling the manifolds, be aware that the intake and exhaust pipes need to be kitty-cornered to each other in the greenhouse. If you build the manifolds exactly the same, the risers will be kitty-cornered to each other when you put it together. To build the four manifolds, we glued two 10-foot lengths of PVC pipe together and cut the assembled pipe at 19 feet. Beginning six inches from the end, we then drilled nine holes two feet apart using a four and a quarter inch hole saw in each of the manifolds. We glued a cap on one end and then made risers consisting of an elbow, then a 20 inch section of pipe, and then a T. We glued a manifold into each of the elbows. We then inserted two foot sections of the four inch pipe into the holes and a coupling into each of the two foot sections. We then used silicone sealant to seal the pipe joints. All of the openings were covered with plastic film secured with masking tape to prevent dirt from getting into the manifolds during installation. The pipe was ready and the materials to build the styrofoam walls was stacked near the building site, so it was time to dig the hole. We staked out the corners, then marked out the boundaries with marking paint. We had cleared a large area about six times the size of the hole to pile the dirt, and we ended up having just enough room to store all the dirt removed from the hole. A friend let us use his small backhoe to dig the hole, and we started digging a ramp at an angle. We continued removing the dirt, and it was fairly easy digging until we got down about three feet and then we ran into a layer of hard pan and we needed to use a jackhammer to dig down further. After a couple more days of digging we finally had a four foot hole and we started building the framework that would hold the styrofoam insulation in place. 
We used 2x3 stakes about 6 feet long and attached 2x3s between them. We screwed plywood to the 2x3s and screwed the 2 inch styrofoam insulation to the plywood. Once we had walls built on three sides of the hole, we began laying the first layer of pipe. We laid the manifolds with the elbows at opposite ends of the hole and kitty corner to each other. We then installed the lengths of four inch pipe between the manifolds using the couplings to attach them together. We attached two lengths of pipe and then carefully covered them with dirt to keep them straight. As we covered the pipes, we also had to put dirt on the outside of the walls evenly to keep the walls straight. We then laid a couple more lengths of pipe and covered them. Finally, we laid the last three lengths of pipe. We then built the fourth styrofoam wall. After the first layer of pipe was covered with two feet of dirt, we laid the other manifolds and installed the nine lengths of pipe between them. We installed risers into the tees and covered them with plastic sheeting to keep dirt from getting into the pipes. The first layer of pipes we had covered beginning at the back of the hole and working to the front. The second layer of pipes we began covering from the front of the hole and working our way to the back. We always had to be careful to put an even amount of dirt on the inside and outside of the walls and to keep the pipe straight as they were covered with dirt. We piled dirt on top of the wall to make a ramp so that we could drive over the wall. We continued covering the pipes and working our way down the walls, putting dirt on both sides evenly. Finally, we had all the dirt back in the hole. All the pipes were covered, and only the two risers were sticking up. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! It was now time to build the frame. The first thing we did was to set the six 4x4 four four posts eight foot on center for the north wall. We then cut the posts off level and installed post to beam brackets on the posts. Then we installed the four by six beams. The poles for the south wall were driven into the ground five foot on center and a two by four rail was screwed onto the poles to keep them aligned. The hoops were then inserted into the poles and screwed with a quarter inch by four inch construction screws into the four by six beams. We then installed one by four purlins to solidify the roof structure. These were attached with heavy duty screws. On hindsight, I will be replacing the one by fours with two by sixes. The roof needs the extra support. I will be using a quarter inch by two and a half inch screws. We then installed the door in the north wall. Four more four by four posts were set in concrete, two for the east wall and two for the west wall. A two by six rail was added under the two by four rail on the south wall and three two by four rails were installed on the north wall. Blocking was installed between the hoops on the north wall to attach wiggle wire to. Rails and blocking were installed on the east and west walls to accommodate wiggle wire. Wiggle wire was then installed and two layers of UV greenhouse film was installed everywhere except the north wall, which was sided with one layer of greenhouse film and then metal siding. The north wall was then insulated with styrofoam insulation on the inside and straw bales on the outside. I will be putting a metal roof over the straw bales in the near future. 
The floor of the greenhouse was covered with black six mil plastic sheeting which I had repurposed from a previous garden area. A six inch duct fan was installed to circulate the air through the underground heat exchanger. A four inch fan was installed to inflate the greenhouse between the two layers of greenhouse film. This provides an average of six inches of airspace for insulation. Three heat collectors were built using one inch PVC pipe enclosed in a metal frame and installed in the north wall. These connected to the underground heat exchanger through a T. A four inch fan was added to push the air through the heat collectors. These will help store additional heat underground all summer long. We did not have the luxury of starting out with a fully charged earth battery going into this last winter, but next winter will be different. We will heat the ground under the greenhouse as much as we can all summer, and we believe that this will make a significant difference next winter. We were given four large totes, three of which we cut in half to make six raised beds. We drilled holes in the bottom for drainage, put four inches of three-quarter inch gravel covered with heavy-duty landscape cloth, and then filled with a mixture of our native soil, compost, peat moss, and manure. The other we made into a water storage tank. We painted it black with spray paint to keep it from growing algae. The water comes in from our well into the top of the tank. There is a float valve installed a few inches down inside the tank that shuts off the water when the tank becomes full. The water warms in the tank and the warm water rises to the top of the tank where it is pumped out with a 12 volt RV pump. We built a small deck on the west end of the greenhouse with table and chairs for enjoying the greenhouse. During the day, the temperature in the greenhouse is usually very comfortable, or maybe a little on the hot side. It's a nice oasis in the middle of winter. We installed LED grow lights to supplement the light in the greenhouse. These made a real difference on the shortest days of the year. If the outside temperature is above 20 at night, the greenhouse can stay above freezing without any supplemental heat. But if the outside temperature falls below 20 degrees, we use a propane heater that is safe for outdoor use. We have managed to keep nearly everything we brought into the greenhouse last October alive through the winter and have grown lettuce, bok choy, onions, beets, and other vegetables from seed. During the shortest days of the year, they didn't grow very much, but they're growing fine now at the end of February. We have had a cold winter this year. It was four degrees outside last night, and the greenhouse is still doing fine. We currently are growing strawberries, raspberries, nectarines, sunflowers, broccoli, cauliflower, potatoes, red cabbage, beets, carrots, onions, green onions, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, kiwi, bok choy, celery, as well as many herbs and flowers. Most of us understand the value of being at least somewhat self-sufficient. And this is one of many practices we have embraced to provide our family with a greater sense of security. So is it worth it? That depends. For us, we love our earth battery greenhouse and thoroughly enjoy working with the soil and the plants. And we love our winter oasis. We've always grown some of our own food but we found growing plants at this elevation to be very challenging. The greenhouse makes it possible for us to grow some of our food even year round. We hope you have enjoyed our video. If you have, please let us know in the comments below. And of course, like and subscribe. 
We will be happy to answer any questions you might have and would love to hear any suggestions you are willing to give. It may not seem important, but clicking the like and subscribe buttons will help us show others how they too can be more prepared. Thank you for watching and for your support. Until next time, God bless.